Good morning, I'm Marta Castellà from the Emergency Department in Hospital de la Santa Creu i Sant Pau here in Barcelona. And I'm going to talk to you about how can we serve the COVID waves in the Emergency Department. The Emergency Department is a non-stop status or 24 hours a day service. Apparently the continuous angio patients is distributed over time on a regular basis, but with quite variability. This variability has a direct impact on the time in the waiting room, the time spent in the emergency department and crowds of people. Therefore, on the satisfaction of both users and professionals, the different COVID waves of these two years cause significant stress among professionals. They try preventing, foreseeing, organizing and planning in order to improve efficiency. Artificial intelligence in healthcare has developed enormously in the recent years and it tends to be associated with precision diagnosis and personalized treatments. We believe in its potential as a tool allowing to anticipate the needs of the emergency room, adapting the resources optimally and making the assistance processes safer for patients and less stressful for professionals. Artificial intelligence can help head of the emergency room in the planning and management. We will present a model that pretends to offer a simplified global and complete vision of the situation in almost real time. This allows the head to predict the inflow by severity, occupation of the different areas, or the need of hospital admissions. Consequently, a flexible and visual status field tool that provides such indicators would solve the needs to predict where the bottleneck will be or where more resources and interventions will be required in order to prepare a start of the day. Amalfi Analytics has developed predictive algorithms with machine learning technology. Especially, the APIS program uses meta-learning algorithms where predictions are not given by a single predictive model, but are the result of evaluating different models and returning the best result or combination of results. Thus, we obtain a greater than 95% precision to be able to combine long-term patterns with variations of hours. The tool is designed to receive alerts, perform an analysis, and then plan accordingly. For example, it's 7 in the morning and I receive an alert in hospital admissions. I suspect an increase in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease cases, and I do a quick search that Confing speaks in cases last week with great variability in severity classification. Then I check the waiting attendance times and confirm that they are uh, correct. Therefore, only an increasing influx and a greater need for admission is expected. Then I can assess uh, the expect influx and predict the occupancy. This way, I can plan to reinforce, if necessary, any time slot during the next 24 hours or rearrange spaces or increase external references. I also know how many beds I will need at the end of the day, being able to anticipate a pre-reserve. So, as a result, the tool should allow immediate view of the status of the service, ability to analyze what happened and how I can improve it obtaining easily a large amount of data in a short time and with an alert system. Optimize internal organization and the short term. The witnesses are that pro promoting a pilot program in terms of COVID have been a great challenge. Uh, the expected results uh, for other indicators could not be measured with those indicators. And which are the plans for the future that to have the ability to anticipate peaks in influx to improve waiting times and crowds is always better satisfaction. Optimize the uses of resources, especially human resources, improve the reconciliation. And always the cost reductions shows better management. And that's all. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you for attending our presentation about the use of telemedicine as a tool to improve chronic patient control. Before beginning, let me present myself, my team, and the hospital we are working. 
My name is Ana Carol Perez. I am Medical Director of Hospital San Rafael of Sisters Hospitalers here in Barcelona. The team who has worked in Medical Day Hospital are doctors Monica Ruiz and Mercedes Gil, and the nurse Mari Carmen Latorre. Other professionals with responsibilities in information systems and medical and nurse statements have participated. The Hospital San Rafael is a general hospital in the north of Barcelona. We have medical and surgical specialties serving a 450,000 inhabitants. We treat 1,000 patients a day in the hospital. A year we conduct more than 100,000 outpatient visits and we have 10,000 hospital admissions. About 60% are surgical. We carry out an important activity in medical day hospital and an important number of them are patients with acute destabilization of their chronic pathology, especially hair failure. As you know, we have a typical pyramid of developed countries with an aging society with an increasing life expectancy. In our society, we have more and more elderly, complex, comorbid patients. And health and education are the areas most affected by the changes caused by ATC. Habitually, we use the face-to-face -face visit to control chronic patients, but it represents little time in respect to the evolution of the state of health of the person. It's like an iceberg. Most of the time, the patient is at home and health professionals don't have information. How could we improve the control of these chronic patients? We propose a telemedicine platform as a monitoring tool to control the patient from home. We implemented a telemedicine platform to monitor patients for one year. First six months with the platform and conventional monitoring in medical day hospital, following six months only with conventional visits in medical day hospital. The objectives of the study were to demonstrate the reduction in hospital admissions during one year of uh, follow-up, to prevent and treat disease, uh, to foster the empowerment of the patient, to assess the adherence to the program, to improve patient self-care. Through an app installed on the patient's mobile, the patient himself or family member or caregiver transmits dates such as weight, systolic, diastolic, blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation on a daily basis. In addition, a survey is included to gather other subjective information. The same platform includes an algorithm for the generation of visual alerts. The system allows for the possibility of establishing direct communication between the patient and the healthcare professional. If necessary, telephone calls are made. The, the date is displayed on the computer screen for the program and is analyzed daily by the speciali specialized nurse. In this experience, 36 patients were followed, equal proportion male and female, average age 82 years, 72% took class in the classification New York Health Association, 64% more than 55 in left ventricular ejection fraction, 55% more than 9 daily drug use, 94% normal mental functioning in fever test, 72% more than free Charlson comorbidity index. There is an improvement before 27 and after 16 in the level of patient self-care. Responsible for data entry, 30% self-patient. Adherence, 75% enter their data into the app for more than half the time of study, more than three months. Finally, in hospital admissions, before our program, 16 patients needed one or more hospital admission. After the follow-up in medical day hospital with telemedicine, two patients required admission. It represents 79% less in hospital admissions and a 69% less in hospital stays. In conclusion, we can conclude that telemedicine in heart failure and a structured follow-up in a medical day hospital achieve good acceptance and adherence to the program, promoting self-care and a reduction in the use of health resources. Thank you very much for your attention.
Hello, I am Maria Angelita Remam from the University of Dodoma, Tanzania. I'm going to be presenting the use of telemedicine system to improve antenatal care in low income countries. This is a report on patient and healthcare worker acceptabilities in Tanzania. Tanzania, like most sub Saharan African countries, has a high maternal and neonatal mortality. According to the 2010 2016 maternal uh, demographic health survey, the maternal mortality rate in Tanzania was 50, 556 per 100,000 live births, and the infant mortality rate was 43 per 1,000 live births. Antenatal care is an important aspect of women's reproductive health, and for that reason, the WHO has put forward recommendations for quality antenatal care that can improve maternal and newborn outcomes. Most of Saharan African countries, Tanzania being no exception to that, face a challenge of quality in the coverage. Information and computer technologies such as e-health, m-health, telemedicine, and artificial intelligence are an important aspect to solve the, the coverage and the quality gap of antenatal care. I would like to introduce to you to the PANDA system, which is an acronym for Pregnancy and Newborn Diagnostic Assessment, and it is made up of three components, or three units. The first unit of the PANDA system is a kit that is made up of basic instruments for investigations during the antenatal care. And the second unit is an Android smartphone Panda app that can be used by the healthcare worker to guide the healthcare worker through social demographic information of the pregnant women, obstetric history and medical history, giving education to the pregnant woman regarding antenatal care and during the post Pattern care. It is also having important information that can give uh, information regarding the birth plan of the pregnant woman. The third unit is the Panda Medical Unit. This is a web based database that captures data and results collected during the antenatal care. And this medical report is available for the, to the medical team that can access these records of the patient, each particular patient and make a diagnosis and give follow-up management for the patient. So we did a cluster-based non-randomized interventional community trial in the rural areas of Mufindi district in Tanzania. We had two sites. One of the sites was the implementation site and the other site was the control area. The implementation site was uh, using the Panda, antenatal, the Panda system during the antenatal care whereas the control site was not using the Panda system and it was using the normal uh, antenatal care that has been put in place by the Tanzanian Ministry of Health. So we did a qualitative study to assess uh, the acceptability of the patients and the healthcare workers. And we did focus group discussions for the patients and we used self-administered questionnaires for the healthcare workers. During the focus group discussions, these were some of the reports or the responses of the women regarding the acceptability of the PANDA system. We feel supported and understood by the healthcare worker, and it is easy to understand the information given by the healthcare worker through the PANDA system. We are happy and we feel satisfied with the services provided. And others said that we feel free to ask questions during the visit and the counseling. And others say that the decisions that were made during the screening was given to them. But others did not understand why some of the investigations were taken and therefore they needed more clarity regarding the investigations. For the healthcare workers, the general information that was provided during the visit was considered exhaustive. And they, they, they say that the Panda visits are very good and the Panda app is easy to use. The panda can also influence the relationship between the healthcare workers and the pregnant women. The healthcare workers also reported that their, their panda system is able to improve the antenatal care quality and their adherence to the antenatal care WHO recommendations. The icons of the panda app were assessed as useful for the women to understand and also it could influence 
the ability to remember the information that was provided during the visit. In conclusion, as it has been shown in other countries where the panda system has been used, such as Italy and Madagascar, panda system provides a promising solution to increase access to high quality internet of care and to overcome the coverage gap. So for quality, a positive pregnancy experience in low resource and underserved areas, pregnant women can benefit from this system. Thank you. Good morning, I am Joan Calzada from the Pediatric Traumatology Department at St. John de Deu Hospital. First, I want to thank the organizing committee for allowing us to present our data and learnings about our telehealth program. In 2012, our hospital started the Hospital Liquid project that came to break with the concept of presenciality as the cornerstone of the attention, working towards a model of conduct that includes any way of communication, breaking the walls of the hospital to be accessible for the patients and families, wherever they are. The patient portal development was included in this project as an access point to non-face-to-face -face care. The first version was implemented in 2014 in some medical departments and updated later to allow the development of new services such as video conference and clinical questionnaires integrated with the electronic medical record. This new portal was assumed by the entire hospital as the telecare channel and its use was progressively extended to other departments. It has been developed to promote the access to the own patient clinical information, what helps in the process of patient and family empowerment and self-managing, to guarantee a safe communication with the clinical team, avoidance of unnecessary presence, promotion of the prescription of some resources of information. We started in 2014, including some patients and waiting to see the real use they would make and how we could respond to their needs. In 2016, a case manager, NOS, joined us team to perform NOS clinical activities, developing training and educational activities for the patients and their families, and to be the reference for the telematic context with the unit. At that moment, we took the decision of including all our patients in the platform. The data I'm going to present were analyzed in December 2019, considering that COVID-19 had had an abnormal effect in the virtuality of the visits for the obligation to avoid face-to-face -face visits. Data from this period have not been afterwards included in the analysis. A total, of, uh, a total of 2,551 patients are registered in our group of rheumatology in the patient portal today. During this period, until 2019, 7,747 communications have been received roughly 2,300 in 2018. When comparing the number of spontaneous outpatient visits, we have observed a 31.6% reduction in our specialty. However, the reduction was not seen in other specialties that follow up our same patients, but not using the patient portal for communication with the families. In those patients with a period of follow-up before the enrollment in the patient portal, we compared the number of visits uh, in our emergency room per patient year with the number of visits after they participate in the patient portal. We observed a reduction of 26.8% in the ER episodes in our hospital with these patients. With fluid communication through the patient portal, we were able to recommend the most appropriate center for being visited, depending on the reason of the visit, um, also in emergency situations. And, um, uh, maybe, maybe they can visit in primary care or in local hospital, not necessarily in our unit. It's very interesting to note how phone contacts also increased year by year, showing that when one non-face-to-face -face channel is promoted, there is a drag effect in other channels too. This change in the paradigm of attention entails a change also in the reality of the typology of the visits. It can be seen how non-face-to-face -face visits increase each year, displacing mainly the number of successive face-to-face -face visits, 24.5%, 
of the total of the concept of the context with uh, the passions are telematic nowadays. In summary, telecare is a very useful resource in daily clinical practice, also in pediatric rheumatology, and its implementation modifies the reality of care, leading to a successful replacement of face to face visits. It allows better patient support and a more efficient organization of health resources, and the incorporation of the nurse case manager to the team supposes a turning point for the number of patients enrolled in the program and the subsequent benefits. Thank you to my team. Thank you to all of you for your attention today. Hello, my name is Astrid Panta, I'm a pediatrician in San Juan de Dios Hospital in Barcelona, and I'm going to explain to you the implementation of a home hospitalization program for acutely ill children checked by telemedicine. First of all, we are going to talk about the benefits of this kind of programs, because it has both benefits for children and family, but also for the hospital. Talking about benefits in children, it reduces risk of nosocomial infections, it enables children and their families to be in their own environment, and it also uh, enables families to participate in the care of the child. But uh, for the hospital, it also has benefits, as, as we said. So it reduces the cost of hospitalization and it also reduces the hospital pressure. But there are some characteristics that make different hospital at home for children and for adults. Children are normally healthy, so they have shorter stays. And this means we have a really high turnover of patients. There, we also have young caregivers, normally their parents, who are easy using new technologies. In, and this may be uh, a strength and a lie in the implementation of our program. These are our admission criteria. Stability, having a trained caregiver 24 hours a day, adequate living conditions, and 30 minutes isochronous. We started the pilot program on April 2019, and after really good results, we implemented finally the program on November 2019. The team is formed by pediatricians, nurses, administrative support, and technological support. The key of the success of our program is the family's training. If you want to learn more about it, you can check another talk that will be held today, later, and it will be held by one of our nurses. Here you can see some of the technology that we use. We have a route op optimizer, which enables us to uh, do the daily routes. And here you can see some of our um, remote telemonitoring dispositive. You can see a scale, a thermometer, an oximeter, and a sphygmometer. And thanks to this tablet, we use this iPad application, and the families they can register the vitals so we can see them and check everything being at hospital. Here you can see some of the results of our uh, of the implementation of our program during the first year. We have seen 650 episodes uh, with a mean of four hospitalization days, a median age of two years old. The most frequent site of, of admission is inpatient ward, and the main derivation service is general pediatrics. More than a half of the diseases we see are respiratory diseases, more than a third are infectious diseases, and then we have a smaller group, which is a variety of, of diseases, including oncological, nephrotic syndrome, tuberculosis, wound healing, etc. Talking about infectious diseases, urinary infections, otorhinolaryngological, and fever sepsis are the most frequent. And about respiratory diseases, bronchospasm is the most frequent. These are the, some of the treatments administered at home. As you can see, oxygen therapy, nebulizations, and IV antibiotics are the most frequent. And specifically, specifically talking about the outpatient 
antibiotic treatment. You can see ceftriaxone is the most frequently used because of the easiness administering treatment, but also uh, other treatments are used uh, in other frequencies. So it is really important self-administration. As you can see, we have a, a really high rate of self-administration. And here's, there's, there are some of the results of what the families think, and they are really satisfied with our program. They, are, they feel excellent treated, and they think telemonitoring is really convenient. These are some of our take-home messages. Pediatric hospital at home is a good alternative to inpatient hospitalization. Many different diseases can be treated at home. After a proper nurse training of the family, self-administration is secure. Remote telemonitoring is well considered, and there is high satisfaction among families. Thank you so much. Here you have our contact in case you need anything else. Dear distinguished guest speakers, moderators, ladies and gentlemen, I am Taiwan Zhanghua Christian Hospital Healthcare Quality Management Department Deputy Director Xu Dongcheng. It's my honor to participate at the 44th World Hospital Congress virtual lightning talks and share our hospital experience to practice digital healthcare strategies. My presentation topic is collaborative information platform, smartphone feedback system reporting critical results of diagnostic tests facilitates uh, effective clinical communication and discharge uh, healthcare delivered. Our hospital scale is Central Taiwan Medical Center with 1,600 beds, safe and regional branch hospitals approved by CIP accreditation, 1.5 million uh, outpatient visits, uh, 48,000 discharges, 80,000 emergency visits in 2019. Uh, critical test results uh, refers to a variability left DPS from the normal range, which indicates a high risk or life threatening condition of an urgent uh, nature for which immediate medical action must be taken to protect life or to prevent the occurrence of complications. We list 16 critical test results based on the risks of uh, critical clinical operation uh, requirement, such as uh, severe hypoglycemia uh, or hypoglycemia, hyperkinemia or hypokinemia, uh, aortic dissection, and uh, pneumocytic as revealed by radiology. Our hospital critical test report following our process from critical test reporting uh, lab staff monitor uh, physician and knowledge within 30 minutes, uh, lab staff activate tracking procedure, patient uh, discharge responsible physicians in the thing and the document medical record, responsible physician contacts patient for return follow-up visits. Uh, critical test report notifications for uh, 9,300 uh, patients uh, include 52% uh, in patients and 5% of patients and 41% uh, emergency visits, 15% uh, discharge critical results. We face a low uh, recall or return rate problem as the 2019 quarter four data showed uh, 49% failure to follow up on these results in a timely manner would lead to delays in diagnosis and adequate treatment of important findings. Uh, the insufficient support uh, our physician are not able to distinguish discharge from critical test report notifications, unable to link patient contact information as recalled, lack of comprehensive follow-up information of patients. 
So we enhance smartphone feedback system, uh, provide information on clinical diagnosis, lab data, radiology image, treatment and medications of the patient to physicians, not whether the patient uh, have been discharged and includes the contact information of the patient or their cares or next to relatives. Uh, notes patients return for the time that have been confirmed by the patient if the patient did not return to the hospital on time. The system will remind the healthcare team to follow up. Recall rate of uh, discharge of patient with critical results from 49% improved up to 88%, increased by 38% with significant change. Enhanced smartphone uh, feedback system significantly improves recall rate of the charge of patient with critical uh, results. The critical test reported in each attitude uh, of a return follow up in the hospital must be customized according to the conditions of the disease to help the responsible medical care team make quick and the proper uh, clinical critical test reported decisions to treat the uh, charge patients. This is my contact information. Thank you for listening. Hello, uh, I'm Peter Lachman, and I'm here with Adriana, who's go and we're going to uh, present to you a, a new way of looking at quality and safety and learning in the digital age. And we want to show you how you can achieve high performance for healthcare policies in this digital age. Over the next few minutes, we are going to present uh, to you the, the uh, MediQ app, which is a way of looking at healthcare in a different light. Uh, the challenge for quality in healthcare could be put twofold. Firstly, how can one implement standards for quality and safety in healthcare in an age that is now digital and has become more digital in the post COVID era? And secondly, how do we change our health policies and the medical culture to implement these policies to facilitate quality in digitalization? Now, we had started this in the pre-COVID era, but it's become more important now as we realize that healthcare is not going to be delivered in the same way as before. So we think we have a solution here that can make a difference for us in the future. Now, if you want to have good quality healthcare, one requires standards and the international standards by ISTQA have been adopted in many countries and, and therefore need to be applied. In order to get engagement and apply these standards, we think you need to combine it with e-health and e-learning. That means that while you're applying standards, you are continually learning. So this allows more connectivity and more risk uh, optimization at that time. So the framework for this is the ISQA accreditation standards and the Medi MediQ app integrates management, integrates learning, integrates um, uh, application of the standards in a seamless way of connectivity and automation. So automation of this makes it so easy that people can do uh, their standards and their work at the same time. So four elements here there are. Digitalize the medical system and processes. That means you require long-term strategic plans for digitalization, and most organizations will need to move this way in the future. There's a lot of evidence that this can improve quality. This will enable real-time assessment. That is so important that we don't look past time, but we rather look at real time with integration of learning with the assessment. We then need to facilitate risk quality management, which is very important. And this has been shown to achieve very good results in Romania, and therefore could be applied anywhere in the world. It's not a one country solution, but could be a solution for any country. So really what we want to show is how this has worked. You optimize the management of documentation in the medical and support fields. This allows for e-learning, which is very important. It's often been separated from standards. 
You can have clinical risk management as well as general risk management for the organization. This will have almost like a total quality management feel. And that's very important. You'll allow a, re a remote working, which gives you the chance to integrate what you're doing at international standards. And you can achieve well, as we show here in this slide, in some of the organizations that have achieved attaining the standards at all levels. And in this slide as well, showing meeting the local accredited standards and indicators by using the MediQ app. So there is a solution available. However, it is not just that easy. You need to have leadership, you need to have people wanting to make changes, and you have to meet the needs both of the clinicians who want to treat patients, as well as the managers who need to manage the organization and the external evaluators who want to ensure that quality is met. Uh, there are other solutions, and here is an example. This is a slide that is there for reference to show you the differences between different kinds of apps and different kinds of approaches. But we think that the MediQ app can make a real difference to the way you address quality and safety. And in fact, it meets the Duran trilogy for quality. Quality planning, quality control and measurement, and quality improvement. And as you know, uh, Duran is Romanian originally, and we think that this closes the circle and brings quality back to Romania and can make a real difference. If you want any more details, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Dr. Chen Ho Li. I'm here to present our study titled Understanding the Acceptance of Outpatients of Chinese Medicine in Using the Medical Assistance Information System by Applying Technology Acceptance Model. This is an overview of our presentation. First, the study was a modified technology acceptance model. Second, the patients or their family can use MAIS to self-report to physicians. Third, the TCM physicians can use the information for the diagnostic methods of inspection and interrogation. In this study, we want to understand how the MAIS can help both the patients or their family and the physicians. If the patients can use the MAIS to self-report to the physicians, it will be greatly improve the communication between the two parties. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, this becomes more important. This study also explains how the TCM physicians can use the information as assistance for the decision-making. Based on the core value of patient-centered care, when we try to incorporate a digital technology into the clinical setting, it is important to consider the patient's acceptance of such system and their participation in the medical decision-making process. That is why with this cross-sectional study, we want to understand first, current status of patient's use of MAIS Second, acceptance of system use. Third, and the satisfaction of the system use. 237 questionnaires were collected and the data was analyzed. This is our research framework. We hypothesize that the current status of patients use of MAIS, acceptance of system use, and the usage satisfaction of system will be all affected by demographic data and the conceptual knowledge of system usage. Since the last few decades, there has been great interest in bringing the technology into healthcare. And from our study results, we found the following. The age affects patients' intention to use the system which concurs with previous studies. Second, users are satisfied with the functions and expected benefits provided by the system. And this can also improve 
the quality of medical service. Third, the results revealed three factors will significantly affect the youth satisfaction. They are perceived usefulness, behavior intention, and actual use behavior. Last, the result of past analysis also show that perceived usefulness is the most important key influencing the use of the system. We hope our study can contribute to our healthcare community to understand that since perceived usefulness is the key factor for the patients to actually use the system, the managers and doctors should focus on how to let the patients realize and understand that the MAIS can assist the doctors and the patients during the medical consultation. Second, the system can help the TCM physician to obtain the information necessary for the diagnostic methods of inspection and interrogation, which is essential for the appropriate decision making. Last, to achieve the goal of a smart hospital, the AMAIS is actually useful and the managers should apply the concept knowledge of continuous quality improvement and consult with the clinicians for the functions necessary for future system enhancements. Thank you for your listening. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's my great honor to present this topic, Utility of VR Technology to Enhance Quality of Patient's Care and uh, Convent of Treatment Decision Related Technology for Patients with Oral Cancer. I'm Yi Zhang Huang. I'm Chief Nurse of Oral Cancer World. And our team leader is Professional Yin Yang who is the head of the Department of Medical Education. And we know that oral cancer incident and death rate are very high in Taiwan. The average age of death for oral cancer is 10 years younger than other cancer. And for early stage oral cancer patients, they have more than 80% of five years survival. If we got land appropriate 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 treatment include the surgery, medication, and the medication. The critical challenges for patients and families of oral cancer is when they release communication information from the health provider with verbal or the written material. They cannot fully understand whole picture treatment, so they are very anxiety about the first come in treatment. A literature review show that anxiety patient cannot fully understand the content of a verbal service, so we need to develop and provide audio virtual material for pre-treatment education of oral cancer patients. And in our program, we try to increase treatment decision related knowledge of health provider. In our study, we compare the written and the VR educational material. And also we incorporated with some gain elements in our VR program. And we know that there are four C advantages of VR material, including the Compatibility, crowd, cover, and consumption. Our study purpose are improve competence, familiarity, satisfaction, satisfaction, and reduce the anxiety for both of health provider and oral cancer patients. In our study, we have two stage. There are development phase and implementation phase. And this is a gun chart of planning. The program is also still continue. In our study, in addition to has set up computer-based VR training material, 
We also develop a smartphone wear bags VR bacteria for the oral cancer treatment. And about the smartphone vision, they are advantage you can use the practice quickly, no limitation of time and space. So in advantage program, we include VR material with gain elements. After our intervention, most of patients and the families a good lab VR material increase preparing for forthcoming treatment of oral cancer, and they are willing to recommendate the material to others. Patients are particularly satisfied with VR materials are very accessible and friendly. After our intervention, the most health provider also agreed that VR material increase education interest care, knowledge, and skill. In summarized outcomes of our project, we have a main of three goals. The first one is establish a flexible model of bedside training of patient service skills of healthcare professional in oral cancer world. The second is develop user and environmental friendly VR materials. And the last one is prepare healthcare professionals to provide effective pre-treatment service. Thank you for your attention. Good morning. I'm Dr. Chen Ho Li. I'm here to present our study titled Understanding the Acceptance of Outpatients of Chinese Medicine in using the medical assistance information system by applying technology acceptance model. This is an overview of our presentation. First, the study was a modified technology acceptance model. Second, the patients or their family can use MAIS to self-report to physicians. Third, the TCM physicians can use the information for the diagnostic methods of inspection and interrogation. In this study, we want to understand how the MAIS can help both the patients or their family and the physicians. If the patients can use the MAIS to self-report to the physicians, it will be greatly improve the communication between the two parties. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, this becomes more important. This study also explains how the TCM physicians can use the information as assistance for the decision-making. Based on the core value of patient-centered care, when we try to incorporate a digital technology into the clinical setting, it is important to consider the patient's acceptance of such system and their participation in the medical decision-making process. That is why with this cross-sectional study, we want to understand first, current status of patients' use of MAIS, second, acceptance of system use, third, and the satisfaction of the system use. 237 questionnaires were collected and the data was analyzed. This is our research framework. We hypothesize that the current status of patients' use of MAIS, acceptance of system use, and the usage satisfaction of system will be all affected by demographic data and the conceptual knowledge of system usage. Since the last few decades, there has been great interest in bringing the technology into healthcare. And from our study results, we found the following. The age affects patients' intention to use the system, which concurs with previous studies. Second, users are satisfied with the functions and expected benefits provided by the system. And this can also improve the quality of medical service. Third, the results 
revealed three factors will significantly affect the use satisfaction. They are perceived usefulness, behavior intention, and actual use behavior. Last, the results of past analysis also show that perceived usefulness is the most important key influencing the use of the system. We hope our study can contribute to our healthcare community to understand that. Since perceived usefulness is the key factor for the patients to actually use the system, the managers and doctors should focus on how to let the patients realize and understand that the MAIS can assist the doctors and the patients during the medical consultation. Second, the system can help the TCM physician to obtain the information necessary for the diagnostic methods of inspection and interrogation, which is essential for the appropriate decision making. Last, to achieve the goal of a smart hospital, the AMAIS is actually useful and the managers should apply the concept knowledge of continuous quality improvement and consult with the clinicians for the functions necessary for future system enhancements. Thank you for your listening.